are starting our transaction review and calculator practice for September 2017. I cannot believe how fast the year is going. Uh, it feels like it's just snapped by just like that. Um, before I get into my examples and the ideas I want to share, of course, I have the disclaimer that uh, it's up to you to do your own due diligence and consult with your own trusted advisors. This is my opinion only. Um, also, just a quick reminder that if you're um, able to come out, I haven't done a live event in quite a while, and I'm pretty excited about this. It'll be a small, intimate gathering, calling it the Property and Paper Summit. It's October 9th and 10th, starting on the evening of the 8th, if you can make it. But it's going to be going in deeply uh, and showing the paperwork exactly what we're doing on the wraps, the notes, the owner financing, things like that. So if you can at all make it, uh, we still have a few spots. Uh, like I said, we're limited by the venue and in the size, and uh, but we still do have some availability. So please go to propertypapersummit.com and uh, check out uh, all the reasons why you should want to join us there. Um, so looking forward to that. This is an actual deal uh, of, of a troubled land deal that uh, was brought to me in uh, Sun Valley, Idaho. So let's get your calculators out and hopefully um, you can follow along and uh, just get, see if you can get comfortable with these top five buttons, that's really all I know how to use. A lot, you know, this is a really robust kind of a calculator, uh, but really, I don't, I am not a whiz at it, but just knowing how to use these top five buttons, I've been able to build um, a note portfolio uh, since 2009, and it's for a mom and pop operation. It's, it's uh, a fairly decent, I don't know. It's a lot. It's enough. It's enough for, <laughs> for me to handle. Um, and I've been able to solve all sorts of financial um, puzzles just knowing these, these top five buttons. So um, now this, like I said, I'm going to get into the story, but let's just run the numbers. If someone came to you and said, gosh, if I could just get, now my pro I'm selling my property for, you know, 300000 the buyer has a down payment, but and they want me to do owner financing, but gosh, if I could just walk away with an extra hundred grand, that would solve my problem. So the buy, I'm willing to carry paper for the, the borrower, for the buyer, but I need more cash at closing. So, they, so let's just figure you're trying to work this out. So if you're saying, okay, well, I can't buy the whole note because I'd have to discount you too high. So let me just buy a partial, which means basically the front end of the note or Whatever you decide, you can buy the end, back end of the note as well, um, or a piece of each payment along the way. But in this case, they just needed $100,000 more to show up at the closing table, and then they can make their deal work, right? Buyer gets to buy, seller gets to sell. So let's put in $100,000. That is what's needed at the closing table. So that goes into present value, or this is sometimes loan amount. And just as a reminder, these Three buttons on the left, I always enter as positive numbers, and these two buttons on the right, I always enter as negative numbers. And that's just how I do it, and I keep in my head, is money in, is it money out? And, and But there's different ways that you can do it. So, And I know that the monthly payment is, so this 100 is the money that needs to come to the table. So that's the present value, that's the loan amount, it's not really a loan, but so the amount that's needed at the table, I know I'm going to get 800 in because that's what the borrower can afford or has offered that would be easy for them to handle. So I'm going to put 800. And of course, I'm going to make it a negative number because this is the monthly payment, which goes right here and under payment. And uh, 24 months in two years, they're going to be able to uh, get an agric USDA agricultural loan. It takes a few months to, to line those up, but the guy can easily qualify. And um, and the, now the balloon is a lot higher than this, but the only amount of the balloon that I bought was 122.5. So that's going to be what future value. That's the balloon. That's a lump sum to come into the future. So so that goes over here to FV future value. So if you know any four of these. Um, numbers you can calculate for the fifth. So I wonder if I give if I give a hundred thousand now and I get twenty-four of these, 
$800 payments. And at the end of 24 months, if I get this, I wonder what my yield would be. So all I do is come over here and push the yield button. It's almost 19% interest. So that sounds pretty interesting so far. I, I like that number, especially if I have a, a very safe position, low investment to value. Okay, now that's the way I crafted the deal. When I brought my investor in, I had them bring 110 in. Why, why would I do that, do you think? If I only really need 100,000 to give to someone, you know, why might I do that? Do you think that I ever have bills and groceries and <laughs> business trips to pay for? So basically, I, I, because of the safety of this deal, I could have my investor bring in 100,000 and I can take 10,000 as a fee for putting this deal together. And let's just see if, so now that goes into the present value and uh, He's going to get 12% because this was a land deal. A lot of times the new money that I'm bringing in for the super safe stuff is coming in at 7 and 8%. That's a really market rate for safe product and uh, where, where I can compete with the, the – there's a lot of money chasing paper and property out there. So, But this, when it's, when it's a, a weird one, you know, it's land. It's not like it's a stick built that everyone understands. It's in, in Idaho somewhere, right? So, um, and I'm going to give him 24, I'm, I'm not keeping any portion of this, even though I'm managing this note and, and staying in the middle of it to make sure everything goes well. So here's what I'm wondering. If he brings in 110 and he's getting 12% interest for 24 months, I wonder how much of that balloon my investor is going to need to get their 12%. So I know this one, this one, this one, this one. So I'm going to solve for this. And I can see that you can see it's negatively amortizing, right? Because 800 is, is not, that's not even a full interest payment. So his interest is, is negatively amortizing. So by the time that, if the balloon goes all the way out 24 months, he's going to be entitled to 118,000, right? So he brings 110 to the table, he gets 800 for 24 months. And at the end of that time, he gets 118,000 and I go, okay, well, I got 10,000 up front. And so, but I know this is the balloon. So at that time, there will be $4,400 left for me. So I kind of have a little kicker built into this at the end. So it's easy for, for me to see that at a bare minimum, I'm going to make about 14,400 putting this deal together. So um, it's it's a really great thing. Does that make sense? Uh, BJ, I don't know if you are still. Yeah, it, uh, I followed it. So you're buying a partial purchase of a note with this, right? Correct. And I'm going to go into the, the details of this, but um, are, do you have this calculator? I do. I followed along with you. Okay, fantastic. So it's just getting comfortable with this. When, you, when you're comfortable with these five things and you can go back and forth and back and forth, you can just make up stuff until it works. Make up the numbers until they work for everybody. So fantastic on that. Now, for just a minute, I, I want to um, just talk about uh, a little bit of my background and, and, and why, how I've evolved um, and, to where I am now. I was a nurse. Uh, for many years, that's what I graduated from. I was a bachelor. Uh, I got my RN, my four-year RN, and right, and right out of college, I went to work um, in the ICU. I was lucky enough that I could get right in. It was, there was a big shortage of nurses at that time, so they kind of fast-tracked me into to ICU where, where I thought you know more of the action would be and develop my skills to a high level, and, um, and that was great, and and my goal was to move to the ER because that's where I thought, hey, that's where all the action is happening. Now, it's really great to have, uh, you know, the ICU. I learned a lot of skills, but like when I would go in, I would know every night. Like I would, I could have the same patient load, the same two patients, six or eight months straight. You know, they're in multiple organ failure. A lot of them were on the vent. And uh, while there's a lot that you can learn, and especially you can make a difference in people's lives doing this more.